When I was a kid growing up playing AFL or footy, it took three years for the boys to figure out I was actually a girl. Um, <laughs> and I remember one of the boys, when he finally found out, he, he started crying. <laughs> Honestly, when I think of Perth, I think of my family. It, it just is home to me. I don't think of Perth as a place. I just kind of think of it as who I am. It was just a really small town. Could be a bit boring at times, but I think that's why we were doing our own thing and getting up to mischief. We had a huge hallway and it was perfect to curl the ball from the lounge room and get it in the study. Everyone that came around had a go at trying to kick this ball. And that was like our family thing. Everyone would have a go every night and the whole house was torn apart. It was just like mayhem. I can't remember anything other than AFL when I was a kid because I always had a footy in my hand, always at my games or at Daniel's games or at the footy club, mum and dad are life members. Yeah, I loved it. They are some of my best memories. I used to live at the footy club. Just playing all the time and then it just got way too rough, way too quickly. The boys were now too big, too strong, and I was just getting battered around. I guess it just sucks that there was no opportunity for, for me as a girl, and as a kid, that's hard to comprehend. And yeah, I think it was just more frustrating being pulled out of the sport I loved, really. I know when you go to a clinic, they're like, how many juggles can you do? I'm like, none. <laughs> She's got better dribbling skills than me. Look at her. She's a soccer dog. Yeah, once soccer started up, I was like, ah, don't know if this is for me. Going from being one of the better players in the AFL to being in a soccer team, I, I was woeful. I scored one goal that year, though. Our team was so bad. <laughs> I wish that I made it my goal and my dream earlier because it took me till I was about 18 to really take myself and my sport seriously. I debuted for the national team at 15. None of my family came to my first game for the Matildas. I told them not to come. I had to have a huge wake-up call to realise that this is what I wanted to do for my career. I knew straight away that it was a serious, serious injury. The hardest part about being injured is, is the mental side of things. It's probably like the lowest point I've ever been in my life and career. So I told my mum, I've just got to get out of here. And all I wanted to do was just be with you. That's a tough time. Because you had doctors saying like your career is over, like, mm. no, you I know, don't. and for an athlete to hear that would be like devastating. Um, Remember when I was in that shopping centre and, and I, I had, had that breakdown? <laughs> and you were like, you need to pull it together. <laughs> you were like crying at the dip. You were like, I don't know what dip I want. <laughs> yeah, she helped me a lot through my injury. That's maybe why I feel so deeply connected to her because that was probably the worst time in my career. And at the same time, I had one of the most like exciting things like building in, in my life. So it's just been really, I guess, nice to have someone in your life that challenges you to be the best you. And I think that's been a really big part of the change in my career is, is her being herself. She's just a safe place for me. The last three or four years, I've just completely been my stubborn self and um, it's allowed me to be the, the best person I am. And I think as an athlete, it's kind of that never ending thing. You always want more, you always want to be better. I know how lucky I am to be a professional athlete. I want to win a World Cup, I want to win an Olympic medal, but I just, I just want to keep enjoying myself. Can't see myself anywhere else.